Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Welcome back, everyone. We're here today with episode 2267 of The Cabral Concept. And yes, if you're watching this on video, I'm still here in my hotel room uh, in between conference sessions and meetings recording the podcast of the day because the podcast always goes on. It must go on. The podcast is a daily show uh, that I love being able to record and just teach a little bit every single day about overall wellness of weight gain or loss, creating your ideal body type for you. Don't let anybody else tell you what your body should look like or feel like or be like. And then also we're working on longevity. We're working on anti-aging, but to get those things, we need to follow the de-stress protocol. The diet, the exercise, the stress reduction, the toxin removal, the rest, the emotional-based support and balance, the actual scientifically based supplements and the success mindset, which enables us to get started in the first place. So that's what the de-stress protocol is all about. I wrote about that in my book, The Rain Barrel Effect, which is completely free now over at stephencabral.com. So please do feel free to pick up a copy. Uh, If you would like, all I ask is that you pay for shipping and handling. I literally pay for the printing of the book. uh, And that is that. So if you haven't read it yet, I would definitely give it a read because I literally take you through exactly what I do in my private practice step by step. Uh, And it will give you a good basis for if you're really dealing with some type of wellness, weight, or anti-aging based issue of, of how to get to the bottom of it. Because the truth is that there is an answer. There's always an answer. And and the, the problem is, like myself, you may not have just found yours. It took me years to find my answer, and I'm simply trying to cut down that learning curve for most people. So today's show, though, the topic of the day, it is a training Thursday, and today's show is going to be on why I believe sprinting is the most overlooked beneficial form of exercise. So when people think of sprinting, they think that it's reserved for like elite Olympic athletes. And and I'm here to tell you today that that is not the truth. I do want you to ease into it, but it is not reserved for elite athletes. And everyone should not only be doing it, but should have the ability to do it. So before I get into the five main benefits of why I believe that you'll want to be doing it, I just want to make sure that if you haven't been running in years, if you haven't been sprinting in years, and what is a sprint in the first place? Well, it's running really fast, essentially uh, pretty close to your max for less than 30 seconds to 60 seconds, really maximally. So you can use any interval-based training style that you like. I've talked about many of them on the show. You might sprint for 20 seconds, rest for 40. You might sprint for 30 seconds, rest for 90. You'll decide on your work to rest ratio, work being how long you sprint and rest being how long you rest. Now you'll find though, a sprint takes a lot out of you. And there's a reason for that because you're working to push your max level of intensity, right? So you're at 70, 80, 90, maybe even 100%. And there's a lot of improvements to the human body that comes from doing that type of work. What I don't want you to see, though, is for you to push yourself too quickly if you haven't been sprinting in years. Now, what could happen? Well, you could strain a muscle. And I just don't want you to do that out of the gates. So what I'd like you to do is just You could even just get used to doing a little bit of jogging first. Just get that body moving. But what you really want to do is you want to get acclimated to sprinting. So you want to do the same sprints that you'll eventually be doing. But all you want to do is do them at a 50% effort. That's it. So you don't want to go all out. Now, again, the human mind always wants to push us. It says, hey, you can go faster than this. You want to refrain from doing that. Because while you're sprinting, you are typically maximally contracting and also maximally elongating muscles in your body. And when they start to do either, that's when injuries could happen. So what I want you to do is just 
ease into it. The first time you ever do sprints, and again, I'll link up some sprinting shows for you today at stephencabral.com forward slash 2267. All you want to do is three to five. That's it. Three to five. I know it'll seem like nothing, but you want to do it after you've already done a workout. It's a great time to do your sprints. And what I want you to do is just pick Maybe now if you're outside, that's the one of the amazing things about sprinting is you can do them anywhere. I guess that's another beneficial tip beyond the five. Uh, but what you want to think about is, let's say you're at a football field or a track or you're just in your neighborhood and there's a hill that you're going to sprint up, right? I just want you to go for 20 seconds. That's about it. You can set a timer on your phone or your watch and you're just going to almost jog. That's it. Almost jog for your first one or so. Your next one, you might just go a little faster and then you just want to stop at, at about Again, just at a running speed. A sprint is obviously all out, but just at a running speed. Get your body acclimated to using those muscles. Do that for a few weeks, and then you can start to take it from 50% to 60% the next week. Again, this is a journey that we're on. We don't need to be, and it's literally not a sprint, right? We don't need to be sprinting the first week we get into sprints, okay? Because we want to do this for our lifetime. So the next week, then 70%, 80%, then 90%, and then you'll decide when you want to go all out. And when you do your sprints, we're really, again, we're not talking about more than really three to five if they're after your workout. If it's its own workout all on its own, maybe seven and 10, but that would be like its own workout all on its own. I like to do my sprints about three to five maximum after I've done a resistance-based training workout. The sun just came out, so if you're watching this on video, you can see me literally basking uh, in this bright light in my eyes. And I apologize. Let me see if I can pull this curtain a little bit right here. This is kind of the blooper reel for the podcast. But we'll, we'll again, we, the show always goes on. So if you're watching this on a video, we'll do our best. All right, how can I move here? here? Here we go. So luckily, the audio will be fine. So what I want to share with you is this. Five big benefits to doing sprints one to two times per week. So you might say to yourself, well, only one time to two, one to two times a week and I get all these benefits. And the reason I say is, or, or the answer is yes. And that's the reason why I said sprinting is one of the most beneficial exercises that people just don't do. Because I don't think that they understand the power of what sprinting can do for your body. And the reason why there's so much benefit is because it is a maximal effort from the human body that produces endorphins and works at what I spoke about on, on uh, you know, becoming truly fat adapted, the alactic or at least anaerobic energy system of the body, which we are very rarely ever in for most human beings, right? Because we're very rarely ever in a 10 second or 20 second or less all out meaning like you'll get exhausted in under 20 seconds. Very rarely do we participate in anything where we become exhausted in less than 10 seconds to 20 seconds of doing it. And that is the power of sprinting. So to be honest, it's honest, it's, it's a lot of fun as well. It really is. You get to do 20 seconds of work and you only have to do it a few times and you get all this benefit. So let's go through it. What are the big benefits? Well, the first one I always like to start with is this because people always want at least an immediate reason of if they're gonna start sprinting, why should they do it? Well, here's the thing. Immediately, sprinting will boost your metabolism. That's, that's a pretty amazing thing, right? So you can immediately begin boosting your metabolism with sprinting. That means that during any given sprint, you're not gonna burn all that many calories. That's not the goal of sprinting. That might be the goal of like doing a longer steady state cardio run or whatever you want to do. But the goal of the sprinting is actually to boost your metabolism. So that means because of your maximal effort as you work up to it, you're going to boost your metabolism, what has been shown now, for up to 36 hours. So that doesn't mean you're tapping into more body fat just at that moment or more glucose or more energy reserves at that moment. What it means is that as your body is working back to homeostasis from the metabolic disturbance that it, that it experienced during those sprints, you actually have an elevated metabolism. That means you're going to burn more total calories, even with that short amount of sprints, than you may with a 30-minute steady state run. So our goal is always to improve our hormones and our fat burning metabolism rather than burn, burning calories at any one time. Because I mean, honestly, how long can you really run for, right? For steady state. Now there's benefits to steady state, so I'm not putting it down, but it's not there to boost your metabolism. 
A steady state can help balance blood sugar. It can help for cardiovascular improvement. It can help for telomere length. It can help for longevity. I'm not denying that, okay? But what I'm saying is if you're looking to boost your metabolism, steady state cardio is not where it's at. The benefits there are longevity and cardiovascular. The benefits with uh, steady with um, sprinting or high-intensity interval training are actually for metabolism and fat burning. So that's the first big benefit. The second one that I will also share, and it's partly because of that big boost in energy-based demand. So think about this. Let's say that you use the 220 minus your age system for finding your max heart rate. I've, I've, again, I have a podcast on this as well. So what you would do is, let's say you're 40 years old. Okay, 220 minus 40, I like easy math, 180, right? So okay, so your max is 180. 180 beats per minute is really what you can put, put out. That's accurate for most people. That's why it's a formula, scientific formula, exercise physiology formula. Some people will be higher based on their constitution, based on their fitness level. Some people will be less because of constitution, because of um, deconditioning, okay? But let's say it's 180. All right. So what we would do is I don't want the I don't want to hurt my uh, head with all of this math. If I wanted to take uh, and I wanted to go at eighty percent of my one hundred and eighty heart rate, I just have to multiply one hundred and eighty by 0. 0.8, and I'm going to get one hundred and forty four. That means during my sprint, if I'm really pushing myself, I'm going to get to one hundred and forty to one hundred and fifty beats per minute, and I'll know that I'm within about that eighty percent maximal threshold. Threshold. Now you can also just do what's called rate of perceived exertion. Rate of perceived exertion means like I feel like I almost can't do any more. Right versus I can't do any more. That would be a ten. Right, that's a hundred percent of it. I feel like I almost can't do any more. Is like eighty percent to ninety percent. Right, so you can always work with that. It's okay to work with rate of perceived exertion. You don't have to use a heart rate monitor if you choose not to. And to be honest, it doesn't work during a sprint. The heart rate monitor, none that I've seen, can really catch up to you during the sprint. It does afterwards. So you can see where you got to after your sprint, but during it, very unlikely for those 10 to 20 seconds that it will be able to keep up. It keeps up fine for steady state cardio, but not necessarily for sprinting because you're going all out, which brings me to my next point. So let's say I get to 150 beats per minute. Here's the thing. My recovery, it's probably going to take me a couple minutes for my heart rate to get back down to normal baseline which might be, again, if I'm standing and walking around in the 70s or so. So if you think about that, I'm getting the aerobic-based benefits during my recovery, yet I'm just standing and pacing around after my sprint, trying to catch my breath. So I'm getting aerobic-based benefits while I do my sprints as well. Not directly during the sprint, but during the recovery-based process. So sprinting actually improves anaerobic, which is the sprint without oxygen, as well as aerobic-based conditioning. So you get both anaerobic and aerobic-based conditioning, which means you also get then cardiovascular-based benefit. How amazing is that, right? So you get anaerobic, anaerobic-based benefit. I think that's pretty fantastic. Now, also because of that maximal effort, you have to think about that. Maximal effort all out. When we do something all out, it hurts sometimes, right? It burns with that lactic acid or even moving past that to uh, to a different energy system using ATP and creatine phosphatate. And when we think about that, like, oh, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna hurt for 20 seconds, but it's only 20 seconds. And then after that, what happens? Well, we get this endorphin boost because we just went through this like big stressor. It's kind of like getting in a cold plunge, right? Uh, or even in a hot, hot sauna. And then after it's done, we get the relaxation effect. And when you get the relaxation effect, you start to shift in the parasympathetic nervous system. You get a little bit more of those feel-good-based endorphins. You get the excitatory neurotransmitters like norepinephrine. And then hopefully what follows, we get a little dopamine boost as well. You get a little bit of GABA, that anti-anxiety, the relaxation-based neurotransmitter too. So uh, pretty amazing that you get the cardiovascular, you get the metabolic, you get the anti-stress ones too. I'm telling you right now, it's so difficult to feel bad about yourself or life in general after you just finished your fifth sprint. You're like, wow, that was tough. I'm trying to catch my breath. I feel amazing. Like it's just exercise is one of the great equalizers. There's no doubt about it. If you're dealing with any mental health-based issues, 
I obviously uh, believe that you should look for the underlying root causes of uh, deficiencies, uh, vitamin, mineral, amino acid, omega-3, as well as toxicities, and also seek out a good uh, therapist or counselor. But if you haven't added exercise yet, I know that you feel like you may not want to. It works better. It seems to work better than really anything else, and that is backed up by clinical science as well. All right, fourth big benefit is the anti-aging process that your body has to keep up with when you're sprinting. If you're sprinting, you're essentially telling your body you're young. I mean, that's really what you're doing. You're signaling apoptosis for old cells. You're increasing, increasing what's called mitochondrial biogenesis, which means that you're making more mitochondria. So you're making more mitochondria. Why would your body do that? Because you increase demands on it and it has to keep up. So if the way that you keep up during sprinting is through producing adenosine triphosphate, uh, am I saying that correctly? Yeah, ATP, adenosine triphosphate, then you are asking your body to say, hey, we need to produce more of this. Your body says, okay, well, I guess I have to manufacture and make more mitochondria. And it will. It will improve oxygen. Uh, it will improve your overall VO2. Now, basically how hard you can push yourself, your oxygen capacity. So it's, it's, it is a, an amazing process for your body to look younger because of the boosted metabolism and the cell turnover and feel younger because you're producing more mitochondria, which helps with the anti-aging based process. So again, very, very little downside. We'll talk about the only downside or we have in a minute. Uh, we'll go over that in a moment. And, and the last one I want to share for you is there's a lot of people dieting their way into oblivion, as I like to say, meaning like they're fasting all day long, they're eating one meal a day, they're making themselves miserable not being able to eat any foods. When you look at people that lift weights or do some type of resistance training and they do sprinting, they're for the most part leaner. And they're leaner because they're boosting their metabolism and they're doing it in ways which allows them to burn more calories over the long run than rather than just see how many calories they can burn on that elliptical or treadmill or bike or whatever it might be, which a lot of those are over-exaggerated in the first place. So what I would say to you is this, uh, dieting is a road to nowhere, meaning like if you're looking to lose 30 pounds and you've reduced your calories by 500 and you're down to 1400 calories, you say, okay, I've reduced my calories. I've lost weight. Now I plateaued and I still have 20 more pounds to go. So you go from 1400 calories down to 1200 calories and you just squeak out a little bit more weight loss. You're like, well, I plateaued again. So I'm going to take my calories down to a thousand. Next thing you know, you're barely eating any food. You're barely eating any calories. You're overextending your intermittent fasting. You're really destroying your overall metabolism. And then you say to yourself, I can't maintain this. I don't want to live like this. I want to be able to eat some regular food. And then you go back to eating your regular food. But since you've decimated your metabolic hormones, which I've been talking about over the last couple of weeks, now you start to gain back the weight. But not only do you gain back the weight, you gain back more. Because you've lowered your overall metabolic rate, which is why I keep trying to pre, you know, teach people that that is not the way to lose weight effectively over a longer period of time. Anybody can teach you how to lose weight in the short term. What about keeping it off? Right? That's, that is the ultimate goal, is to be at the right body weight for you. I'm not telling you what percent body fat that you should be. I just want you to be at a healthy body fat for you. That's all. It doesn't matter to me. I want you to be happy. Right? I want you to be healthy. That's the bottom line. I want, you to be, I want you to live long enough to see your grandkids and great grandkids. That's the goal. But I also don't want you to be uh, decrepit in that state. I want you to be healthy. I want you to have a good quality of life. That, that's what I want for you. And so my goal is just to try to teach you um, in, in a lot of different ways, different things that may work for you. And I believe that by adding in one or two sprinting days per week, and it, honestly, it's going to take you 10 minutes. That's it. 10 minutes after a regular workout once or twice a week. Just try it. And again, start slow. Ease your way up. And I told you there's only one downside of sprinting because it's not the time. It's only 10 minutes, right? You can fit in easily three to five sprints within that time. So, you know, what's the downside? The downside is that 
it's not going to be a whole lot of fun for those 20 seconds, right? It's not going to be a lot of fun, except if you can get a partner to do it with you and you can push each other, it is a whole lot of fun because you're pushing each other, you're having a good time and uh, you know, you, you know you're doing something good for your body and it's such a short period of time to give yourself that all up push and you're probably not doing that in any other area uh, really. And so to be able to do it sprinting, I'm telling you right now, it, could, it might even become a little bit addicting. You may actually uh, very much enjoy it. So hopefully this show was helpful. I hope that it gets you to try some sprinting over the next week or two. And again, start slow, work your way up. You've got plenty of time, uh, but you'll enjoy the benefits then for years to come. If this show is helpful, please, as always, do feel free to share it with anyone else you believe could serve. Take care, everyone. Have an amazing rest of the week. Before you go, I wanted to ask you this question. What if I could teach you in just a couple of hours how to transform your thyroid, hormones, adrenal, cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugar, weight loss, energy, mood, brain, pregnancy, anti-aging, or many other health-related issues. After 20 years in private practice, after seeing and overseeing a quarter of a million client appointments, I sincerely feel I have the real-world data and have found the answer you've been searching for. So what I've done is spent hundreds of hours of my own time refining what you need to know in order to uncover your underlying root cause health issues and then begin to rebalance the body and bring it back to a state of robust health and wellness. I'm gonna teach you exactly what I do in my private practice so you can understand how you got here and now what you need to do in order to heal. You'll receive all of the important success checklists, protocols, and even ways to customize it to make the program fit your busy life. And you'll get all of this at a fraction of the price. Let me save you the time, money, energy, stress, and frustration of not knowing what to do next. Instead of reading dozens of books on the topic and seeing multiple practitioners, I will condense everything that you need to know in just a few hours of video tutorials that you can watch and listen to anywhere. Together, we will make this healing process an enjoyable one that you can take with you for the rest of your life. I wish you all of the best of health and happiness, and I hope to be able to guide you on your healing journey through my health results accelerators. Simply choose the health imbalance you're currently suffering from, and by the end of today, you'll know what went wrong and how to get well again. I guarantee it. For details, head over now to stephencabral.com forward slash courses.